Hi YouTube, this is going to be a multi-step process on how to make mirrors for a laser cutter uh, with, you know, parts you might have kind of around the house, well, sort of. Um, I'm starting here with a uh, an old three and a half inch hard drive. I say old, this was a two gig hard drive. I don't think we have any need for it anymore. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the platters out uh, because, believe it or not, the platters inside, if they are made out of aluminum, not glass because I don't have the ability to cut glass, if they're made out of aluminum, you can end up cutting them into a circular shape and using those as a mirror for a laser cutter. And the optical qualities are similar to that of the expensive mirrors that you'd purchase otherwise. Um, I believe they're 80 to 90 percent uh, optical quality compared to the professional mirrors, so it's not exactly the same, but it's it's darn close. Um, so uh, this is the first step. I'm going to take apart this um, hard drive here, pulling off all these screws and then removing the platters, uh, and I'll get back to you. All right, so I've separated the platters, or removed the platters from the hard drive. This one has four in it. And uh, these ones appear to be aluminum, which is good, because the last time I tried this, I ended up with glass ones that had to start over. Sorry, the light over here in this corner isn't that great. Uh, I wish I could tell you how to take these out of every hard drive, but every hard drive is a little different. So, uh, you know, e easiest way to do it is just remove all the screws, see what parts come apart and which don't. And in this case, it required a little bit of prying and things, but they're out. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to bend those because then it will ruin your mirrors. Uh, I did scrape some. It's not a big deal because you only need one side of the mirror and they're both coated in the same stuff. It's aluminum. It's got like a carbon coating. Um, again, it's pretty pretty resilient, but clearly not against uh, you know prying tools and whatnot. So it's all right. Let's turn those around. And what I have over here is something pretty straightforward and simple. I've got two blocks of wood and then I have a hole saw chucked up in my drill press. It's like a mm, little over three quarters of an inch, probably a seven eighths inch hole saw. Um, and I've cut through this top portion, but not the bottom. And there's a little bitty gap in between the boards. You can kind of see that there. What I'll do is I'll slip a platter in there. I suppose I can show you. Not two, just one. Come on. There. Slip a platter in between here, making sure that it covers or it doesn't. I don't want to cut off an edge, I want to make sure it's centered in the hole there, at least one portion of it. And then I'll use a clamp and clamp this down, which will hold the block to the uh, drill press table as well as clamp the platter in place. And then I'll run my hole saw back through again. What that'll do is it'll rough cut. Um, a bunch of small round mirrors, which is kind of necessary for uh, making a laser cutter. I suppose you could just cut a platter using like a Dremel or something. It doesn't have to be round, um, but I think it looks a little cleaner. And my plan is to mount these with um, thermal epoxy or thermal glue onto um, some heat sinks because um, if you can dissipate heat on mirrors, they will last longer. So. That's the plan. All right, I'll get back to you once I get these rough cut. All right, so I just got done cutting some mirror or some hard drive platter. You can see here's what's left of the very first platter. I was able to get six mirrors out of it. Uh, well, seven really, but um, here they are. They're still rough. They have a little bit of, of um, material, aluminum left on the outer edge that should flake or cut right off. That one actually came out clean. That's what I'm going for. That one there. Um, what I want you to be aware of though, I put those down, uh, Here's one that you can kind of notice. See how on this side over here, right above my thumb, there's a little bit of a, a, a bend or a burr, which 
you know, and if you can kind of see in the camera there, it's distorting or bending the image. This would be a bad mirror. I'd throw this one out. Uh, certainly, it's scuffed up the back. I mean, that's part of the whole saw process. Is once it cuts through the material, it just kind of spin in the hole. So um, this would be a bad one. The best thing I can say to avoid this is just go really slow and ease through it. Um, and as soon as it clears through, and you'll kind of feel the difference, stop. Um, because you don't want to keep it spinning on the back side and then and you don't want it to grab and bend because I mean, this optically isn't effective at that point. So there we go, we got six to play with. You only need three for a um for a laser cutter. Um, but I guess it's good to have backups. Um and like I said, in my hard drive that I tore apart, I had four platters, so technically if you could get seven good mirrors out of each platter, and there's four platters you could have 28 mirrors, which is quite an abundance of little mirrors. But, um, whoops. But there you go, that's how you get the mirrors out. Um, maybe when I get my thermal adhesive and my little heat sinks, I'll show you how to build up the, uh, the rest of this mirror mount um, so that uh, you can use it for focusing capabilities, or at least. Uh, properly angling the mirror for uh, laser alignment. Alright, I'm going to let you go for now.